Hello Thinksters and welcome to a new Pandas tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn about the Pandas merge as of function. And this function performs a merge which is similar to a left join merge and but here we match on near keys instead of equal keys. In this way the function is especially useful when we work with uh, time series data. And to get started we create two data frames df1 and df2. And to do that, we <coughs> first of all import the pandas library, then we create the two data frames. And yeah, both data frames contain a time column and a price column, but uh, the two different values or the, the values of the two different data frames uh, differ from each other. So this here is data frame one. And down here we have data frame two. And now that we created both of these, um, we can now perform our first merge as of operation. And it simply looks like this. So um, we put in three arguments here inside the merge as of function. The first two arguments are the two data frames df1 and df2. And the third argument is the on parameter, which uh, expects the label of the column that we want to merge on. And we set this parameter equal to time, so we want to merge on the time column. And the resulting data frame has two price columns, price x and price y. And the time column here contains the same timestamps as um, data frame 1. And that's because we said this data frame is the first argument. Uh, so this is basically the left data frame. And since the merge as of operation is similar to a left join, we get the values from the left data frame here. And when we take a look at the new price columns, we can see that price x or uh, the price x values also equal the price values from df1. And that's also because df1 is the left data frame. And the interesting column is actually price y. Um, for example, the price y value in the first row equals the price value from df2 in that same row. And that's because the first timestamps from df1 and df2 um, are the same. They are both, both end with uh, double zero. However, the timestamps in the second row um, from both data frames differ from each other. For df1 it was um, 01 at the end and for df2 it was 02 at the end. Um, and the price y, y value in the second row in the resulting data frame, in the merge data frame, is 5. And thus it's unequal to the price value of um, df2 in the same row. And that's because by default the merge as of function performs a backward search. And thus it takes the price assigned to the backwards nearest timestamp from df2. And that is uh, the timestamp that ends with uh, double zero. And the assigned price value is five. So we get uh, the value five here. And similarly, uh, the price y value in the third row is nine because the timestamps um, from df1 and df2 and that row uh, and the third row don't match and the function as I said looks backwards for the next value and since the timestamp for the third row and the resulting data frame is um, uh, ends with 05 it looks for the next value which is backwards the nearest to the timestamp in df2 and the backwards nearest timestamp from df2 is uh, the one that ends with 04 and thus the function takes this row's price value, which is nine. And as I said, um, by default, the function performs a backward search, but we can change that by applying the uh, direction parameter, um, which we can set either to backwards, with the, which is what we have seen right now, and uh, right here, and we can also apply the values forward and nearest. And we will start with forward. 
So for that approach, I will just copy what I did above here and I will add the parameter direction. And as I said, I set it equal to forward. So we perform a forward search here. And yeah, as the name suggests, it's basically the opposite of a backward search. So we are looking for the for subsequent matches instead of prior ones. And we can when this way we can perform it with the initial with the initial merge, which which was uh, backward. And yeah, the time the time and price x columns remain unchanged. However, some values in the price y column are different now. For example, the price y value in the second row is now seven instead of five. Um, yeah, the timestamp ending with 01 does not exist in DF2. So the function looks for the next timestamp time stamp in DF2 instead of the previous one because we're doing a forward search here. And the next timestamp from DF2 is uh, the one that ends with 02. So the function takes this row's price value, which is 7. And the last option for the direction parameter, as I said, is um, the value nearest. Now we'll show that to you now. So um, the nearest direction, as the name also suggests, looks for the nearest um, timestamp in this case. And the only value that changed here compared to the backward search is the price y value in the fourth row, which is now 12 and before it was nine. That's because the nearest, um, as I said, nearest direction search, as I said, looks for the closest match. And the timestamp um, ending with 07 does not exist in DF2. So the function looks for the timestamp that is closest to uh, 07. And that is the timestamp um, 08. So the function takes this row's price value, which is 12. And it might be that we don't want to um, include exact matches in our merges. For example, if we only want to get values from unique timestamps and therefore we apply the allow exact matches parameter. And this parameter expects a Boolean value and it is set to true by default. So I would just delete the direction parameter here. So we don't set this parameter, so we are performing a backward search again. And we add the allow exact that matches parameter. And we set it to false. So we do not allow exact matches here. And after executing, we can see that um, the value that changed here uh, compared to the initial uh, merge as of operation with not the allow exact matches parameter. The only value that, that changed is the first price y value, which is now nan instead of five. And that's because the timestamps uh, in the first row of DF1 and the uh, one in the first row of DF2, they match, they are the same. And since we don't allow exact matches here, the resulting value is nan. We can also select uh, a tolerance um, by applying the tolerance parameter. So we can determine how much tolerance um, between the timestamps we want to allow. Uh, yeah, so let me do that here. So again, um, we perform a backward search and we set the tolerance to a time delta of one second. So we basically allow a time difference between the time stamps of one second. And yeah, that's the only difference here is that we apply the tolerance parameter. And um, 
we can see that in the fourth row uh, at the timestamp uh, ending with 07, we find a NAND value, which was uh, the value 9 in the initial merge as of operation. And the reason behind this is that the timestamp uh, ending with 07 does not exist in DF2, so um, the merge as of function looks for the previous timestamp in DF2. Um, however, the previous timestamp is uh, 04 or ends with 04, so it does not lie within our tolerance of one second because the, um, the difference between 07 and 04 is 3, so it's not within one second. So the price value from that row is not used, and thus we get a NAND value here. And for the last section, we will uh, modify data frame one and data frame two a little bit by adding a category column. This is data frame one now, and we do almost the same for data frame two. We also add a category column, but we assign a little bit different categories here. So it's also A's and B's, but a little less, less A's and more B's. And this is what data frame two now looks like. And now we merge the data frames on the time column again, but we add the by parameter, which basically adds another layer of merging. So it's like this. So we merge on the time column and by the category column. And this is the resulting data frame. And the values that changed are again the values from the price Y column. For example, the value in the third row is now seven. In the initial merge as of it was nine. And the category in the third row in the resulting data frame is A as we can see. And since the timestamp ending with 05 from the third row in the resulting data frame does not exist in DF2, the function looks backward for the next timestamp because we didn't assign the direction parameter here, so by default it again does a backward search. And the next timestamp backward would be um, the one ending with 04. And the assigned price value for this timestamp in DF2 is 9, but the category uh, for this timestamp in DF2 is B. However, the function looks for the next timestamp from the same category, which is A, because we are um, looking for the category A here. And this timestamp is um, in DF2 is the one ending with 02, with a assigned price value of 7. And Thus, the price Y value in the merge data frame in the third row is now 7 instead of 9 because we are also merging by the category and not only on the time column. So, yeah, that was the um, tutorial. We studied the pandas function merge as of in this tutorial. We learned the basic functionality of this function, how to uh, search in different directions, backward, forward and nearest, uh, whether to allow exact matches or not. Uh, we saw how to specify a tolerance and how to perform this operation by specific columns. And yeah, that was the tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something and I see you in the next one.